7. The blank are part of the contract documents. Uh, hopefully this is a pretty easy one. Um, uh, the, let's just jump straight to the answer. The answer is going to be B, the addenda. The addenda are part of the contract documents. So uh, why not the shop drawings? So who produces the shop drawings? Shop drawings are produced by uh, all sorts of other people. Um, you may look at them and they're part of the overall project, uh, but they are not part of your contract. Um, and they're not part of the sort of contract documents that you have prepared for the uh, contractor. Uh, contract documents is kind of an interesting term. When you think about what that means, uh, contract documents are essentially saying when you produce a set of, of drawings, of both the drawing set and the project manual, what you're making is somebody else's contract. You're making the materials that will define the contract between the owner and the general contractor. So that's why we call them contract documents is that uh, that's what you're aiming towards, is to make their contract. And so all the stuff that you're doing in order to make their contract is doing all that design, you're putting all the information together, you're putting the specifications together, and then the contractor is responding with shop drawings. So the contractor is saying, okay, we've read your contract documents, this is our understanding of how the steel is going to get laid out, or this is our understanding of how the millwork is going to uh, get put together. Uh, and that's their process. You have a role to play in that process, which is to sort of review and to uh, speak up if you see any problems, um, but essentially that's their process. So that's not part of your making of the contract documents. Uh, it's their process, you just have a response to it. RFP is clearly before there's even a contract. An RFP is a request for a proposal. So that's at the very, very, very beginning of a project. And what you're doing is you're saying, what the owner is doing is saying, okay, we have a project. We want to get people interested uh, in being the designers for it. Uh, so we're going to put out an RFP and everybody responds and you say, yes, I want to do this project and here's how I would respond to it. So there is no contract yet. You don't even have a contract yet, so the RFP is clearly not part of the contract documents. D, uh, construction schedule, is kind of an interesting one because D is an integral part of the contracts. It's just not an integral, integral part of your contract. Um, that the construction schedule is all about the general contractor. That's their job. You don't really have anything to to do with the construction schedule other than to help the client owner understand the, the implications of different schedule choices. So you're there to advise the client in that case, but you, you're not producing a construction schedule. Uh, so addenda. So addenda is the answer. Uh, when does the addenda happen? You put together your set of drawings, you're getting ready to bid. Uh, and as you bid them out, uh, inevitably there's some confusion and, and issues on the addenda. I mean, excuse me, on the on the con on the drawings and on the specification. And contractor calls you up and says, "Hey, I don't understand this thing. Why it says two different things in two different locations?" Uh, you never answer them. You only just take their question. And then as you get a few of those questions, you make a list of the questions and you answer the questions in written form and you send it out to all of the bidders because you really want to make sure that you get uh, apples to apples bids. That, that document is called the addenda and so that's the system that you're altering the original uh, contract documents that you put together. You're saying here's some additional information with more detail and maybe even scratching out some of the detail and putting in new detail because you've figured out more. So once you produce an addenda, it goes in and it becomes part of the contract documents. Okay, so it looks like everybody got that one totally right. Cool. Basically. Yeah, that, that one should be a pretty straightforward one. There is an uh, interesting question from Nicole. She says, going back to question number six, if we can go back for just one sec. Mm -hmm. She said, would the client have the rights to completely rebuild the same project on the same site after a um, natural disaster? 
and what role will the architect be required to play? Would there be an additional fee? Well, that's a really interesting question. Um, I I see. After a natural disaster, the house is leveled by a tornado, right, uh, and um, they still have the set of drawings. Yeah, I think they could actually just build it. Um, I think they have the right to just to just build it because it would be that project in that location. Um, and I don't think they would owe you any money. Now, in you know actuality, what typically happens in a situation like that is people are like, oh, I'm going to rebuild the house, but you know, sure it'd be nice to have a pool or whatever. You know that the things would actually change, or our situation is just different now. You know, the kids were young then. Now we have the kids are all in high school and they're going to go off to college soon. Maybe it becomes an office instead of another bedroom or something. So things tend to change. At which point it's actually a different uh, project, and so that's where it would get a little confusing. Um, but uh, I think the gist of it is, you know, it, I'm, you know, I'm not a lawyer on this stuff, but my understanding is that it would still be the same project in the same place. Then yes, they they would have the right just to do it. Okay. Interesting question. Yeah, interesting comment from actually Jason here. He says, if it's a if it's a flood, national flood insurance will only pay to build the structure back the way it was originally. Yeah, so actually, was, flood insurance is really good. Uh, that's a good point. The flood insurance stuff is fascinating, um, and it's only becoming weirder and more complicated because uh, there's so many, you know with the rising uh, water levels from uh, um, climate change, uh, all of the insurance companies are doing their damnedest to figure out how to get out of flood insurance. Uh, and so the, the, the ways those things are written are becoming more and more arcane. Uh, I was just listening to uh, a seminar talking about an example of that, and somebody who had thought they had complete flood insurance was telling the story about how they ended up with uh, about, uh, I think it was maybe 50 cents on the dollar of the replacement cost. Uh, because of the fine print on it. So the flood insurance is a very particular part of the world uh, of, of construction law. Uh, but yeah, it's a really good example.